Welcome to the AAA or the Advanced Audit and Assurance Study. My name is Steve Chen. I'm the fellow member of ACCA, the course director. In this course, I'll be guiding you through of how to pass the AAA exam. You may be aware of the pass rate of the AAA. It's been quite low compared to other optional papers. But in this course, together with our tuition lectures and also the revision lectures, We'll also have our premium content with regards to the education book summarising all of our exam technique that's available to the AAA exam. And also, for the past exam questions, we have already written our own answer so students can follow quite easily to pass the AAA. I must say that I've been teaching the AAA for more than 10 years. I've got experience of helping students pass and ace their A. AA exam, so using our own technique. In this course, first of all, you need to have a copy of the edu education book in front of you. Just download it and print it out, and then you will see the content of this book. So the AAA exam has built the knowledge from what you've studied in your audit and assurance, or the AAA, uh, in the previous studies, as well as the strategic business reporting or the SBR studies. And this is why in the chapter one, we'll be going through the IFIs that you have already covered in your SBR study. And then moving on to the regulatory environment in particular, we'll be focusing on the money laundering issues and combining with all other bits and pieces relevant to the AAA exam. And also the ethics part, that's very important, that's quite similar to what we've seen in the AA study, as well as the quality control, and that's very important in the AAA exam, because in the AAA, you're acting as the audit manager or perhaps the audit partner. And this is why quality control in terms of training, supervising, and that's quite important, not only relevant to the individual engagement, which means individual contract with the client, but also the quality control for the entire firm, that's very important. And also the practice part is quite important in the AAA exam. Unlike what we've studied in the AA, the AAA will heavily focus on the practice part. So in terms of uh, setting up your own audit firm, in terms of advertising your audit firm, the tendering documents that you're going to submit, the practical considerations, uh, you need to consider before you accept as the auditor for the for the client. That's very important. Chapter five then, very, very important here, is planning and conducting an audit of historical financial information. We'll be covering different ISAs or the international standards on auditing from your previous study or the AA exam. And then chapter six, we'll be covering the completion stage so before we report or issue our audit report to a client, it's very important that you final check all of the items that you've done during your audit. Chapter seven, you may have not studied in your AA exam in the past, which means the other assignment in terms of forensic investigation. Uh, so for example, investigating something related to a client that would be presented at court or perhaps we're going to audit or to check the prospective financial information, so for example, the cash flows forecasts or the forecasted SFP of the client, if the client is going to use these statements to borrow some money from the bank. Chapter 8 will be covering the latest developments in the ISA as well, relevant to the AAA exam. So these are the contents relevant to the AAA study. As I said before, you may have already studied the international standards on auditing as well as the IFRS or the International Financial Reporting Standards from your previous studies. In the AAA exam, we will repeat all those knowledge that you've studied before. But the key to pass the AAA is not just about knowledge, but also about the exam technique. And this is why in our course, we'll be dividing different exam questions into setting up our own exam technique so you can achieve an exam success 
in the AAX of. The first type of question would be to evaluate advantages and disadvantages of a given case. Uh, so, for example, from the client's perspective, that you may be asked about setting up the audit committee for a client and so on, but you may be asked about the advantages as well as the disadvantages of, say, for example, having the quality control and to planning the audits and so on and so forth. So what you need to do, perhaps from my experience, is to follow our own four steps approach. So first of all, giving your points as what, and then describe the benefit or drawback, and say why, and then we need to copy the case information into your answer. The second type of question would be to explain the impact of something. That's very important. So the impact uh, if the written representation is not obtained. So you need to include a subheading as a step one and to describe your point and uh, this is per the ISO requirement and the impact of this will result in that the, all the evidence is not complete and then copy the case information into your answer again following the four steps approach. But if you encounter the third type of question, uh, the issues may be encountered in the tendering document. So if we were to work for a new client, we may need to compete with our other audit firms by submitting our tendering document. So step one, include a point. So what will be brought into your tendering document? So for example, the number of firms that you have. And then with reasons why you think that's very important because you can tailor the client's needs. You can meet the client's needs. Applying to a case, that's very important. So two steps here. If you encounter the fourth question, assess issues to be considered in the engagement before you work for that or not, before you work for a client or not. Step one, you include what, okay? Simply copying the case from the scenario. And second, quote, the ISA, quote, the auditing standard, and comment, because you need to assess, you need to comment whether the ISA has been followed or not. So why this is important, or perhaps if this is not followed, what will be the impact on the firm, and then you need to provide your advice as well. As you can see, when we mark the script of the AAA exam, Instead of simply providing a sim simple sentence, you need to include a paragraph into your point. So into your paragraph, so for example, one paragraph may contain four sentences here. So each of that will account for 0.5 marks, something like that. So you can reasonably um, assume that will be 1.5 marks per point in most circumstances in the AAA exam. The fifth type of question would be to explain the reasons. So, explains the reasons. You need to include the potential impact. Okay, so why this should be corrected. And why does it matter? Because if not correcting it, it will be a breach of visor and something like that. And also, additional matters to be considered. You may be professionally sceptical about auditing the transactions of a client and so on. You can include that there. That's the fifth type of question. The sixth type of question will be following the two steps approach. Includes your description, which means the what, and then the detail applying to the case. Discursive questions, okay. Again, explain the detail and description. It follows the ethical issues as the eighth type of question. You need to state the threat from the case, for example, the sale of interest threat, review threat, and so on and so forth, and whether the code has been followed, and then recommend actions or recommend safeguards. That's the step three. Number nine, then, explain reasons why analytical procedures are, for, are performed. Okay, so step one, so how analytical procedure can be performed in terms of comparing your client's information with the past or with your competitors. Step two then, 
It is a copy from the case. Step three, how clients financial statements will be affected if this is not followed. And fourth, how the procedures helps with the auditor uh, so we can stay alert during our audit. Number 10 is a very popular question, business risk question. We'll always deem two marks per point in the AAA exam. So what you need to do, copy from the case, that's the step one, probably as a subheading, and summarise it from the case information. Step two, this is a risk to the business, to the client's business, because if this goes wrong, the client's revenue may go down. You need to say the impact, okay? If it goes wrong, it impacts on the company's reputation, costs or revenue. The eleventh type of question will be the audit risk question. That's, that's very important there. So sometimes there will be three marks per point and sometimes there will be two marks per point. It depends on which exam settings that you're in. For analytical procedures, for the audit risk, you need to follow the three steps approach. We'll see that later on when we come to the actual case study questions. And for the IFAS related questions, there will be four steps there. And from the AA exam's point of view, in terms of materiality, you need to determine the absolute figure. So instead of simply taking the inventory balance from the client's financial statements and divide it through by the total asset, that's more than 1% of the total asset, and you can say that that's material. And um, this is outdated, this approach is outdated. So what the examiner currently says is that before you start, which means planning the audit of the client's financial statements, you need to determine the absolute figure of the materiality level. So at the start, you need to apply the standards of materiality and to determine the absolute figure. So for example, any given value that's higher than uh, $3 million would be deemed as material to the SFP and so on and so forth. You also need to set separate uh, materiality level for the statement of profit or loss as well. And then for the 12 type of question will be the going concern part. Okay, just copy from the case information. This affects the clients and the possible impact on the client's future. Uh, yeah, we'll see that later on in our later studies. The thirteenth type of question will be to explain the reasons why the matters need further investigation. You need to say to the examiner, if this is not the case, what will be the impact and why this matters and this no matters to be considered. That's very important. We will also see that uh, in terms of professional marks in the AAA exam, there will be 20 professional marks here. And in terms of the format or the communication marks, there will be four. Uh, but we'll see that when we come to actual case, no problem for that whatsoever. Okay, uh, before we start the next chapter, which is the chapter one uh, about the IFIS, I'd like to end this section and I look forward to seeing you in the next section of our study. We'll be beginning the chapter one, recapping what we have studied in the SBI exam. Bye. A, P, C, accounting for your future.